Welcome to the Superdome in New Orleans, where the seventh-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish hope to bring down Herschel Walker and the number one-ranked Georgia Bulldogs in the 1981 Sugar Bowl. Let's join Keith Jackson alongside Frank Broyles with the opening kickoff here on ESPN Classic. And we are ready to go as Notre Dame will receive the football and Georgia will kick it off. And Jim Stone, number 42, and Ty Barber, number 12, are the deep men. Jimmy Stone is playing in his final game for the Fighting Irish. He's a senior out of Seattle. He's had a very fine year. Kicking off for Georgia will be a young man who has put his name in the Bulldog record book. His name is Rex Robinson, and he might very well, as a place kicker, be a most important figure for Georgia before this day is done. It was his 57-yard field goal that won the game against South Carolina. All of the officials are out of the Southwest Conference, and the game is on in the Sugar Bowl. The Irish let it go. Stone catches it as the ball threatened to bounce back outside of the end zone, and Jimmy Stone made a heads-up play. Mike Curry, we expect to start at quarterback for Notre Dame. We'll check it as soon as they're lined up. John Sweeney, the fullback. Pete Hollihan is a wide receiver, big guy, and Tony Hunter, the big play man for the Irish. And as you saw, it will be Carter. Phil Carter will be at the running back. And it is Blair Keel that who that's who gets the call. Blair Keel, the freshman, comes out. Blair Keel is the man that Dan Devine says seems to get him out of trouble. So he indicates Mike Corey is the man he may look to. And Keel will go long, throws it as far as he can for Tony Hunter, and he can't come down with it. Mike Fisher just barely broke it up. Tony Hunter was gone. Keel just simply didn't throw the ball far enough. He'd be frank, he'd be thrown it another two feet. It's touchdown. It definitely was, Keith. You can see Hunter gets in behind Fisher, number 31, and the ball goes right through Hunter's hands. Fisher really had very little to do with it, except he might have shielded his vision a bit. And so Notre Dame now does exactly what they said they would do, go for the big one on the first play. They go to the eye formation now, and Keel will go back and throw it again. He swings this one out to Phil Carter, and Carter gets two big blocks to get around the corner, and he is caught. Only one man had a real good chance to get him coming down the sidelines as number 22 goes for 22. It was Tom Thayer that really got him around the corner. What a beautiful executed play. Drop back screen, and we're going to watch the right guard Thayer and the center, 57 Scully, All-American, make the key blocks right there, both of them. And Carter turns up and makes a nice gain on the second play of the game. And Notre Dame is operating with a first down at their own 42. First and 10 for the Irish. It's Carter over the left side. Dives it up to the 44. He picked up two yards. And the fighting Irish front now. Mike Shiner at tackle. He is 250 pounds. Randy Ellis, a 251 pounder. John Scully, 255 at center. Thayer, 258 at guard. Post Derek, 260 at tackle, 6'9. And the tight end, Mass Pack at 227. It's a very big football team. Second down and eight at the Notre Dame 44. Georgia with a six-man front. Keel on a roll, has help. Caught from behind, dropped at the 46. Eddie Weaver, the nose guard, was hunting the quarterback and found him. Have a look at number 61 doing his thing. Eddie Weaver is very strong. He only stands six feet tall, but he weighs 270 pounds. He has quickness and speed, as you can wit witness right here, as he closes to the football and makes the tackle on quarterback Keel, number five, right there. Outstanding play by Weaver. It is third down from just outside the 45, and they need about seven yards. Keel straight back, looks for Hunter, goes the other way, and the pass is caught by Mastak, the tight end. Down at the Georgia 38. And the freshman quarterback threw a bullet for 16 yards. Oh. The defensive alignment for the Georgia Bulldogs, Robert Miles, Jimmy Payne, Eddie Weaver, Tim Crow, and Pat McShay up front in the trenches. Ross Taylor, linebackers, and the secondary, Werner Fisher, Welton, and Hip. 
It was Hip that made the tackle that kept Carver from breaking it loose. As Carter looked like he was gone down the sideline. First down for the Irish, Georgia 38. Holohan in motion. Keel gives the ball to Phil Carter. Carter is hit. May not have reached the line of scrimmage. Georgia's going to have to gamble on defense. Going to have to do some stunning. Jimmy Payne made the tackle. President Carter and Mrs. Carter and Amy watching. Need to enlarge on what you said about uh, Weaver and also Payne. They're going to move to the tight end side, feeling that Notre Dame likes to run in that way and get the best defensive players they can to that side. Second down, about ten and a half yards, and Keel comes outside. Plenty of time to throw it. It is caught, but it was caught after it was almost intercepted. Hunter came up with the ball. Werner made a try for it, and he went right through him. Watch the execution by Tony Hunter, number 25, the very gifted athlete. Watch him come back for the ball. Otherwise, Warner, number 19, would have had the interception. Just an excellent play by Tony Hunter, number 25. Nick Beard is in at tight end now for the Fighting Irish. Maztac is out. The football is at the Georgia 30. That was a pickup of about eight and a half yards. They've got to go to the 28. They need two here on third down. They give it to Carter, the tailback. Carter picks his whole penalty flag is thrown by the umpire. The umpire standing in the short area of the defensive secondary back of the linebacker whipped it in there and it looks like it may be against the Irish it is illegal use of hands the referee Clint Fuller that's a five yard penalty it is not holding it is pushing well that's a tough place to get a call defensive call Rules been changed a little bit this year so that you uh, offensive linemen have a little more use of their hands. But on oh, number 61, Weaver, let's see Thayer number 64. He cannot use his hands once the defensive man has gotten parallel with him. He yep. can use his hands while the defensive man is in front of him only. So it's a good call. Five-yard penalty. And it's third down and eight. At about seven. Third down and about seven with double wide to the top of the picture for Notre Dame. Deal gives it to the tailback Carter. Carter is caught by the outside linebacker and brought down short of the first down. And it brings up fourth down. And Harry Oliver comes into the ball game. Nate Taylor, number 47, made the play for Georgia. Nate, Nate Taylor, number 47, strangely enough, was a walk-on. As a freshman, he still got a scholarship and led the team in tackles as he did this year. He moves over, closes, and assists in the tackle to stop Carter short of the first down. Condini will hold for Harry Oliver, the left-footed kicker out of Cincinnati. He's two for two from 50 yards or more. This is from 50 exactly. He's got plenty of leg on it. It's good. A 50-yard field goal for the Fighting Irish in their first offensive possession. And they pick the lead, three to nothing, at 10 minutes and 41 to play in the first quarter. And we come back, Georgia will have the ball. Come on, Harry on, Oliver gives the Fighting Irish a 3 0 lead on. in their first possession. Georgia's about to get the ball for the first time. As Scott Werner and Chuck Jones are the deep men with Mike Johnson to kick it off for Notre Dame. Mike is a sophomore out of Rochester, New York, and he hits it. And he hangs it up there. And it's going to be returned by Werner. Scott Werner splits him and gets it out to the 21. The starting backfield for Georgia. Buck Ballou from Valdosta. We talked about him. Jimmy Womack, birthday today for Jimmy, the fullback. Herschel Walker, well known now. Amp Arnold will not start the ball game. Chuck Jones should be in there at the flanker spot, and Lindsey Scott is the wide receiver. I'd also say that Tim Huffman started at guard for the Fighting Irish in their first series. Here's Georgia now. First possession of the ball game. Down 3 0. First down at their own 21. Ballou gives it on a little delay to Herschel Walker, and Walker is out to the 24 for three yards before Scott Zedick and Pat Kramer bring him down. The offensive line, Jeff Harper, a 240-pound tackle. Jim Blakewood, a 230-pound guard for Georgia. Wayne Radloff at center, 230. Tim Morrison, big guard, 260. Alongside of him, another 260-pounder, Nat Hudson at tackle. And Norris Brown, the tight end, 215 pounds. 
Second down and seven for the Bulldogs. And they turn, give it to Walker. Walker trying to get outside. Does get outside. Penalty flag down. Look out for this one. Herschel Walker got it across the 30 and close to a first down. But look out for the penalty flag on that kind of a play on a sweep. It is easy to clip. Also easy to hold. Here it is. Holding. Offense. Clint Fuller heads the officials team, all of them out of the Southwest Conference. Lewis Shuffle, Red Shaw, Fuller and Shaw, their last game. They retire after this one. Mike Wetzel, Ron Underwood, and Jim Evans. It's a good team of officials. Keith, and the penalty that uh, will be assessed against Georgia will be 15 yards, 10 yards, half the distance to the goal line. But it's a big penalty, major penalty. Puts Georgia in a real hole now. Carney Norris is into the lineup at tailback, replacing Walker for the moment. Of course, they may move Walker out, put him in a different position. Chuck Jones is going in. Amp Arnold, who had gone in on the last play. Arnold has had a knee problem, hurt it in the Florida game, and has really hadn't had much work. And Vince Dooley a little fearful that Amp might not be on top of his game. They'll miss him, too, because he is their big playmaker, one of their big playmakers. Second down now. Georgia is all the way back at its 13-yard line. They've got to go to the 31 uh, to get the first down. And here's the pitch to Carney Norris out of the tailback. He's got a yard up to about the 14, and he is the other New Year's baby. Happy birthday to Carney. So Womack and Norris are both observing their birthdays playing in the Sugar Bowl. Ball is up around the 14. The Irish defensive unit, Hankard, Kramer, Gramke, Zedek. They're working on Herschel Walker on the sidelines right now. If he's injured, the linebackers you saw there for Notre Dame and the defensive secondary reflected there. It is third down and long. Pressure's on Ballou, can't get away. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Joe Rudzinski, number 51. Rudzinski got him back at the six. One of the things that the Notre Dame coaches said, they're going to try to intimidate Buck Ballou by blitzing the linebackers and maybe even the strong safety to try to give him the bad play and discourage him. He'd have been able to get away from Rudzinski. He had a whole lot of room outside, though, and he, Rudzinski stayed with him and got him. Malkowitz punts it out of there for Georgia, and it is fielded by Krim. John Krim takes it back up on the 43 and brings it back down to about the 41. It was a 36-yard punt, two-yard return. Notre Dame has the football first down on the Georgia into the field. Herschel Walker is up, moving around. The trainer worked on him a little bit. We don't know exactly what for, but he seems to be all right right now. In the meantime, the Georgia defense got to muscle it up here against the Fighting Irish. Ball just outside the Georgia 41. First down for Notre Dame, and Keel is still the quarterback. Georgia almost jumped. Blair got back in time. Phil Carter sweeps it off the left side, and Carter takes it down to about the 37 of Georgia, where Robert Miles, the defensive end, leads the defensive play. Carter now in the game. Four carries, 10 yards. But that's what he did right there on the season. He's a very fine football player, a slashing type runner that can turn just a short yardage into a very nice game. Second down and a little more than five. Carter again hit behind the line of scrimmage but wiggles his way back to the line of scrimmage. It was Frank Ross number 48 a senior from Greenville South Carolina who penetrated and took away the quickness of Carter with a contact. The fullbacks for the Irish Sweeney and Buchanan are bringing in the plays and right now John Sweeney number 33 has come in with 35 Buchanan going out. Blair Keel and his numbers for the year. You see zero touchdown. Look at Georgia stunning blitzing crashing trying to get the pressure on and the pass is thrown and completed by the freshman quarterback. Lee Keel was in the grasp of number 41, Pat McShay, defensive man, and he just muscled it downfield to the tight end, Maztec. You can see that Keel has some mobility. 41, McShay nearly makes the stop right here, but he, Keel turns and throws, and Maztec, who has tremendous hands, makes the reception for the first down. Well, Blair's strong, isn't he? Yes, he is. 200 pounds, six foot tall. It's the first down at the Georgia 30. Double wide, top of the screen, new offensive set for the Irish for this ball game. 
Give it off to the tailback, Phil Carter, the sophomore from Tacoma. Hits down to near the 27. That's Tacoma, Washington. The muscle of Notre Dame. They are very big along the front. 250, 265, 255, 258, 260. And it forces Georgia to gamble on defense. To enlarge on what Key said, Georgia will have to move their men around into the gaps so that their defensive men will not be lined up head on the big, big Notre Dame offensive lineman. Second down, seven. Carter. Oh, did he take a wallop? He lost the. Did he lose the football? Nope, guess not. He almost lost his life. <laughs> Tim Crow was coming. Sophomore from Stone Mountain, and watch this hit. Right there, Tim Crow plays left defensive tackle. He was shooting the gap. In effect, he was slanting to the tight end, which is what George's plans are, and he came free into the backfield. Folks, I'll tell you right now, Phil Carter is one tough fellow. <laughs> but he's still in there. It is third down and seven. Field. Too much time, I think. Very, very definitely yep. a big mistake uh, for the Notre Dame football team, Chief. Well, there was a penalty that stopped him last time, and they settled for three. What happened is that Georgia had the blitz, moved in with their ends, Single coverage and Keel tried to change the play, go to a one-on-one pattern to Hunter, but time caught him. Erskine Russell, Irk Russell, is the fellow who is the defensive coordinator for Georgia, and he's done all kinds of things with his go. defensive unit in getting ready for this ball game. Go. He's been with uh, Dooley for all 17 years of, at Georgia. Out of the shotgun on third down and 12. Keel throws it over the middle and the pass is just, just tipped away. Robert Miles, the defensive end, had dropped off the cover. Maztec, the tight end, and uh, just flipped it away. We must remember that Maztec missed most of the season. He's a great receiver. He gives an added dimension, but Miles comes in front of him. It's a last instant and deflects the ball. A big, big play that forces Notre Dame into the field goal situation. Oliver has hit a 50-yarder to give the Irish a 3-0 lead with five and a half minutes to play. This one is a 48-yarder. He is four out of six from this distance. It is blocked. Number 14. It looked like came flying in. And the ball comes rolling back across midfield. And that's got to fire up the Georgia Bulldogs. It was number 14 who made the play for Georgia. Terry Hogue, the defensive back, a freshman out of Huntsville, Texas, and he is the only Texan on the Georgia team, and look at this. Watch him come in front and get his hands up in the air, and that's what blocked the kick. He and had a little bit of a gap inside the defense offensive end, which is a mistake on Notre Dame's part. You shouldn't let him come inside like that. And Georgia has the ball at the Irish 49. First down. Bulldogs for the first time today on the Notre Dame side of the field with Arnold in motion. Give the ball to Herschel Walker. Walker gets outside a hankered and Walker runs it inside the 45 to the 43 before Tom Gibbon. Let's watch the block again. Hope number 14 goes right over the top. Keith, it looked to me like he might have put his feet on the back of one of the Georgia linemen as uh, Bob Crable did when he blocked the field goal to preserve Michigan their victory game. against Michigan a couple right. of years ago. Right. In any event, it was a great play. Betcha. Walker picked up seven on that carry, second down and three. The football is at the 43 of Notre Dame, and it's Walker again, and Herschel again gets around Hanker, and he's got a first down. And he put away a photographer as he went into the crowd. Let's, let's watch the block again. It appears to me that... Uh, no, that's a Notre Dame man he's going to step on. Right? He probably, he might have stepped on a Notre Dame back of the offensive lineman, came over the top, number 14. Look how high he is. That's just a sensational effort. He really wanted it. That's what we're saying to him. He wanted first that. down for the Georgia Bulldogs at the 36 of Notre Dame. They've got Arnold in motion. He's coming towards Scott. Double wide left. And Ballou's still got the ball. He wants to throw it. Goes over the middle into a crowd, and he's lucky he wasn't picked off. Very fortunate because he threw it right into a crowd. 
Gibbons, the safety man, broke in front and had his hands on the ball. Could have intercepted it, as Keith said. There's the Notre Dame defensive stats for the year. You can see how effective they have been. Eighth in the rushing defense, fourth in total defense, and sixth in scoring defense, allowing only three touchdowns in the last seven games. Second down and ten for Georgia. They threw it on first down. Ballou gives it to Walker. Herschel running inside. Goes across the 30. Bulls his way to the 27. His inside running has improved tremendously throughout the season. I think that we all agree with that. Keith saw him in early November. I saw him in the middle of November. And he has improved. He's worked hard on it. He told me earlier that he had knew that this was the one weakness he had of not being able to find the blockers, Keith. But on that particular play, he waited patiently and saw the block and he made a nice run. He weighs about 220 pounds. He's got big, strong legs. Ronnie Stewart in at fullback now, replacing uh, Womack for Georgia. It's Walker again. Herschel gets a block. And he turns it upfield. And he's got a first down for Georgia at the Irish 20. And he got a big block from Jim Blakewood, the left guard, to get him around the corner. Blakewood, number 77, is their pulling guard on the sweep. And as Key said, he's made the key block. But let me just add this. Of all of the great running ability, as we see the, his rushing stats during the season, and I want to continue with this, as all these yardage we mounted up, he has only fumbled one time. As a freshman, that's the most remarkable thing I can be. Lost one fumble in the ninth game of the season against Florida. Herschel again into the stack. Doesn't get much that time. Too much muscle there. He gets one yard. Notre Dame defense is very, very tough and stiff on this part of the field. They use their corners and their safety to blitz, trying to force Georgia to go to the air if they want to score. Time remaining. You see there, first quarter with the Irish leading by a score of three to nothing. Second down and nine. And it's Walker looking for a hole inside. Nothing there. Stood up and then decked by Zedek. Zerbagnan had him, stood him up, and then Zedek put him down. Zedek, number 70, All-American. A senior, a fifth-year senior that knows how to recognize the play. Watch him. As soon as he sees the play, he comes back and assists number 46. So back then with the tackle to stop Herschel Walker on a short game. Third down and nine. Ballou on third down to throw. No chance. No chance. Number 23, Dewerson, was coming on the play, looped to the outside, and coming right behind Dewerson was Hankard, and Hankard got him. John Hankard is a senior, number 47, just an outstanding football player, a high level of performance as he has started for three years, a defensive end for Notre Dame. Rex Robinson is in the ball game. The story on his season in field goals, you can see. He is a career scoring leader in field goals in the Southeastern Conference. It's a 46-yard attempt. Everything is good. Plenty of leg. It's a tie ball game. So Rex Robinson, six out of nine from that distance this year, pulls Georgia even with Notre Dame. Here's the Crescent City, the picture coming from the Goodyear Blimp America with Captain Tim Townley Wren, graduate of Tulane here in New Orleans at the controls. Up there with him, cameraman Billy Sullivan and Lee Burton, our technician. It took them 14 hours to go 356 miles from Houston to New Orleans to be with us today. And it's a gorgeous day outside. Oh, just clear as it can be. Well, we're in the house. And in this building, a marvelous engineering feat. Yes, it is. Here's the kickoff by Robinson. 50-yard field goal by Oliver and a 46-yard field goal by Robinson. The ball's bouncing around inside the five-yard line. It was a mistake by Notre Dame. Georgia's after it. And Georgia's got the ball. Georgia's got the ball. Football a mile high, and the Notre Dame backs just ran away from it. They knew they didn't have a chance to return the football, and they thought it would bounce into the end zone, but it did not. Like I said at the very beginning today, you gotta have a little luck. Bob Kelly from Savannah came down the field and recovered it. I cannot believe I've never seen anything like it. The Notre Dame backs thought the ball was going across the goal line. It didn't, and stole number 42, recognizing this. 
came back but couldn't get the ball and Georgia recovered on the two-yard line. And it's first and goal to go for Georgia and would you believe it? With a minute and 45 seconds to play in the first quarter. The ball is just outside the one. It'll be officially a two-yard play. The crowd is roaring. Ballou, a quarterback sneak. Maybe half of it. That is startling. But obviously, the kick was a mile high in the air. You see Georgia's takeaways were most pronounced, led the nation this year. And Stone and Barber both ran away from the ball thinking it's in the end zone. He, in all of my years, I've never seen that. I've seen him catch it on the one and fair catch it in all types of plays, but not leave it laying there on the one-yard line. Second down and goal to go for the Bulldogs at the Irish one. Got to be Walker. Touchdown. As we see it again, Walker is going right behind all Southeastern Conference. Marshall number. 76, all Southeastern Conference, Hudson number 66, right behind him for the touchdown. Extra point try by Robinson. He's made 101 in a row. He missed the first one as a freshman, has not missed since. He's got 102. So with a minute and four seconds to play in the first quarter, the Georgia Bulldogs take advantage of opportunity and take a 10-3 lead over Notre Dame. Well, the Georgia side of the Superdome is mighty happy about the turn of events. As a high, high kickoff, and I can't stress that enough. That ball was a mile in the air. And is either Alphonse Gaston, been suggested they might have lost it in the lights. One, maybe, I can't believe two would lose it in the lights. They thought it was in the end zone and didn't go in. Here's Robinson, and he puts another one up in the rafters. But this one carries to the end zone, and they're going to come out with it. Jim Stone, and he's got some room. He comes all the way to the 29, close to the 30, before Bob Kelly, who recovered the kickoff a moment ago, makes the tackle. Well, the Hula Bowl is coming up on January 10 from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. Oh, the trade winds will be blowing, and we've got all kinds of folks. Several people from these two teams are going to be there. I know Scott Zedek is going. Mark Herman's going to lead at quarterback for the East. We'll have Samoa Samoa at quarterback for the West. He's from Washington State. He's going home to play football. Two outstanding collections of All-Americans and stars. And here goes Keel a mile downfield. Threw it for Tony Hunter. And Hunter was way behind this play. If that ball had been thrown on their first bomb attempt that far, they'd have had a touchdown. Very good point, Keith, because this, on this particular play, Fisher was ready for the bomb and had backed up very deep and had good position on Hunter. So we've got 51 seconds to play in the first quarter. Keel is now four out of seven for 52 yards in passing. It is second down and 10 for Notre Dame. The ball is just short of the 30. Georgia leading 10 to 3. Keel rolls. Getting some heat. Gets away and gets outside to about the 36. Pat McShay, a senior out of Anderson, South Carolina, almost got him. McShay had his hands on him a while ago, and he still got a pass off and completed it. The mobility of a quarterback is so important. McShay is a very fine football player, one of Georgia's best. They'd like to have him rush in the pass twice so far. Keel has escaped and made a gain, one completed pass, and a nice gain on the run. Well, you got a guy named Dooley coaching the opposition and a fellow named McShay trying to tear <laughs> your quarterback's head off here. The Irish are after the Irish. It is third down at about three and a half. As Keel goes back, Blair's in a little trouble this time, and McShay finally got it. Pat finally got it on his third try. Oh, they're excited. Pat McShay, coaches tell me, is just an ideal type football player. You'll find a place for him on your football team. He does the right thing at the right time, which was evidence on that last play, the sack of Keel. And it's fourth down, a little more than 10, and Keel will punt for the Irish. First punt of the ball game by Keel. Average is a little better than 40. Has no pressure. 
It's a high hanging knuckleball. Scott Warner. Warner, who can break that big play on you, brings it back and gives George a pretty good field position. He's out around the 38 yard line. It was a 41 yard punt, and Keel hung it up there. 3.6 seconds. And the University of Georgia, as we said earlier, leads the nation in punt return. Scott Warner, just outstanding courage. He wants to catch the ball, and they have a new wrinkle that they're using on their punt return. This helped them all year long. From the 38, the Bulldogs with five seconds to go in the first quarter, leading 10 to 3. Ballou pitches it to Walker. And Herschel runs right over the top of the penalty flag that was thrown. And let's see what that's about as the quarter has come to a close. So while they talk about the penalty, we will take this time out after quarter number one, Georgia 10 and Notre Dame 3. Well, Clint Fuller, the referee, has said the five-yard offside penalty against Notre Dame, the defensive team, will extend the first quarter. So it's an untimed play, which will close out the first quarter. So this one goes into the book in number one. It is first down and five, Georgia. From the 43, Ballou wants to go deep with it. He does. He's got a man, and it goes right through his hand. Norris Brown, the tight end, was open, and the ball went right through his hand. It was a sensational throw from Ballou. It's a fake to the right, which holds the defensive right half back Krim just momentarily. Brown is a tight end, and I'm sure that Krim didn't think that he could run as fast. He has a 10 flat, 100 speed. Watch the ball go right through his hands. Would have been a sure touchdown. Oh, Norris, are you going to remember that one? Now the quarter is officially over, and there are the numbers. First down, Notre Dame three, Georgia two. Both teams have moved the ball. Georgia is the surprise in the passing with zero. Notre Dame is the surprise with 52 yards passing. Meantime, Georgia on second down and five from the 43. Give the ball to Walker, and Walker can't find any room in the middle. Coming back from his defensive end position, John Hankard, the primary tackler. Walker on the draw play as we watch the Georgia defensive uh, coach flash in the plays from Coach Dooley. But Walker had no chance on that play. Hankard was right there. It'll be third down and five from the 43 of Georgia. Norris Brown had it in his hands and let it go. And he was wide open for a touchdown. Blue on a roll. Gets pretty good protection, but he's using too much time. He has nobody to throw it to. He's hit on the sideline. Number 98, Pat Kramer. Big guy out of Colton, Washington. Sort of got there a little late along with Gramke, but they were inbounds when contact was made. And so it brings up a fourth down. And Malkowitz is in the punt for Georgia. Mark Malkowitz. He's a dandy. Oh, that is a howitzer over the head of the Notre Dame people, and this one does go into the end zone. I think that's what they thought earlier, except that one didn't. But that was a honey of a punt, 59 yards. And according to Mike Swanson, stopwatch was in the air 4.2 seconds. That's a long hang time. First down for Notre Dame from their own 20. Georgia leading 10 to 3 with 14 11 to go in the first half. Bear Keel turns, gives the ball to his fullback. Ball get loose. Georgia has the ball. Georgia man comes out of the bottom of the stack with a ball. Chris Welton, the rover. He saw it come loose from the fullback, dove in there, and came up with it. Young Chris Welton is a finance major, had a four-point average during this past football season when Georgia was gaining the number one status. Here we see Sweeney, the fullback, who doesn't carry the ball very often. He's hit hard by the linebacker. Right in the hole, and the ball is on the ground. You can see it, and number 10 comes in and makes the play. And here goes Herschel Walker to the 15. He's down to the 10 and out of bounds, just short of the 10. Georgia 
Recovering the kickoff on the Irish, two scored the touchdown, and now Notre Dame's turned it over out at their 22, and the Bulldogs have it first down just short of the 10. Walker now on 10 carries with 46 yards. And that could have been one of his best because he was hit at the line of scrimmage by Rudinsky, number 51. Yerson hit him five yards down the field. He broke both tackles and went on to the 10-yard line. Walker lines up the eye back. Ronnie Stewart in motion. They've got the two blocking fullbacks in there. Buck Ballou on a roll. He's running for the corner. He's down to the five. He's out of bounds down about the four. Maybe the three. Johnny Krim saved the touchdown for the Irish. Just great, great execution on Ballou's part. The receiver, Brown, was in the end zone but covered. He had only one choice, Ballou did. That was to turn up the field, and he did decisively for a big gain instead of a loss or a possible interception. The ball is just short of the three. They could conceivably get a first down without scoring, but it'd have to be very close to the goal line. Walker, sweep to the right. Good blocking. He's in there. Jimmy Womack, the fullback number 25, made the block that opened the door for Walker. Most often from the high formation, when you see the tailback make a good run, number 25 is the fullback. He has to take pride in his work, and he made an outstanding block that allowed Walker to go in for the touchdown. Rex Robinson for the extra point try. Jim Broadway will hold it. He's got 102 in the record book. He's got 103 in the record book without a miss. And the Georgia Bulldogs, with 13-49 to play in the first half, have taken a 17-3 lead over Notre Dame. And here's the Walker touchdown run, but look for number 25 and the black big block here. The fullback normally makes a roll block on this. He's going to take, usually takes his shoulder, and he's going to go down and not up. <laughs> Number 19, Krim, right on the ground. And Walker goes in for the touchdown. And we'll be right back after this word. 5-19 to go in the third quarter. Georgia recovering a kickoff on the Notre Dame 2 when the Irish backs receivers did not cover the ball. Recovered a fumble at the 22 and both times scored. And a 46-yard field goal accounting for their scoring. Notre Dame's only score, 50-yard field goal by Oliver. Keel from the 43. Gets his pass to the sideline. It's good to Hollihan. Pat Hollihan is caught at the 50 and shoved out of bounds. On the last two possessions, Notre Dame made some yardage, but Georgia strengthened and stopped them. Forced the punt on one occasion and a missed field goal on the second. Notre Dame has come right back in the same pass that they completed the whole hand twice a little bit earlier in the quarter. Let's not get it away from him. There's Buck Ballou, who's had a great year. He's a leader they all look to. From the 49-yard line, give it to the tailback, and Bill Carter appears to have a first down as he works it down to about the 46 of Georgia. Incredible that Ballou would be 0 for 8. And Georgia be leading. And Georgia be leading. Mistakes. Go back to mistakes. Coaches, that's the one thing that changes the football game is mistakes. You Look out now. Scott Werner's come off the field. It's a first down. And Werner is off there now. Let's see who they're going to put over there to cover uh, Hunter. Greg Bell, number 20, is in. Bell is 5'11". Hunters on this side lined up against Mike Fisher, the other corner. First down from the Georgia 47. Give it to Carter. Phil Carter pops it up the middle, and he paid for it. He got it down to about the 44. Picked up the better part of three yards, but he took a walloping from Weaver and from Crow and from Creeman. Eddie Weaver, number 61. 270 pounds. He delivers a good blow on the offensive blocker, attacking him. 
Then he waits and finally moves in and helps on the tackle on Carter. Number 61, Eddie Weaver, all Southeastern Conference guard. Blair Keel back to throw it, throws it short to the fullback Buchanan. Buchanan is caught by Welton and shoved out of bounds at the just inside the 40. That is just short of the first down. See the time running in the third quarter. Georgia's been giving up some real estate to the Irish offense. But each time they have turned them back without letting them score. That's the Georgia strategy. They've used this same defense on Eric Russell for 17 years and very successfully, I might add. Keel now with 99 yards on 10 completions and 19 tries. On third and two, Keel almost falls down. Weavers after him, gets his pass off, and Holohan makes a sensational catch. Pete Holohan makes the catch down at the 30, and Notre Dame keeps the drive alive. Terrific catch by Pete. He had to have great concentration because the ball was thrown way behind him. Short yardage. Notre Dame decided to go for a running action pass, and Hullahan is going to see the ball being thrown behind him. He turns and leaps back, concentrates, pulls it in for the completion. First down, Irish, Georgia 30. Hullahan's caught four for 44. Give it to Carter. Phil Carter on a sweep, finds a hole. And the sophomore. Bust his way down inside the 20 to the 19. Buchanan, a fullback, led him through the right side. What we should mention again, this is a third possession this quarter for Notre Dame. This is a third good drive that they have put forth. They came away empty on the other two. Let's see what happens with first down on the 19. And you begin to wonder is uh, whether or not the Georgia defense might be getting a little tired. But after a long time in the third quarter, First down at the Georgia 19. It's the tailback Carter. Carter is actually fell over his own man. He fell over Sweeney, the fullback. Here's Bill Fleming. Keith, I just talked to Mike Corey. I asked him about the hand. He said, well, it hurts a little bit, but I think I could play. I said, was it broken? He said, yeah, I'm afraid so. The x-ray shows that we do have a fracture here. So I, I don't think we'll see him again. Okay, Bill, thank you very much. It clears that up. Scott Warner is back in the ball game the left hand back for Georgia. And he goes up against Tony Hunter. Man, man for man. Man for man. That's right. He's right face. Heel back looking for Hunter. Goes to him and Hunter's got it. And Hunter's loose and Hunter's inside the five. First and goal to go. Notre Dame and that time Hunter put a little move inside. Went outside. The pass was perfect. And this time Tony won it. Watch this play. Just a perfect execution. You see Warner playing him man for man, meaning he's ignoring the pass. He watches it, and as soon as Hunter makes the break, he makes the break with him, but the ball is perfectly thrown. Good catch, but watch Hunter. You can see what a great athlete he is. He nearly scores with the football. First and goal to go at the two. Carter there. It looked like there are 11 red shirts waiting for it. And I might add the Georgia band has picked up their noise right now, which is not going to be any help to Notre Dame hearing the snap count. He didn't gain an inch. Georgia will what use the defense we call guts, meaning if they throw the ball, that's Blair's good stats, 12 out of 20. If they throw the ball, it's just a touchdown. Everybody will be coming. Everybody, all of them. Second and goal from the two. Hollahan motion. Tailback, Carter. Penalty flag. Penalty flag by the linesman across the way. It, I wouldn't want to guess, but I believe it was Notre Dame. Excuse me, I mean Georgia. Offside! Defense. Right. Lindsay, number 59, playing the defensive left side, may have been the man that moved a little sooner. He's a young sophomore that's had a good year. Very talented player that has a 4-6, 4-6 speed. Now Notre Dame gets a free run at it again. Two down, three downs to make a yard and a half. I believe that they'll go right over the top with Carter. That is the best and surest way to score in football today. All right, here it is, second down, goal to goal. 
Carter over the top. Touchdown. Broke the plane. And finally, Notre Dame gets a touchdown at 54 seconds to go in the third quarter. And before Georgia receives the kickoff, Steve, I should mention that the conservatism of Georgia in this third quarter has cost them. They haven't done anything but hand the ball or pitch it to Walker and try one play action pass that didn't work. They're going to have to get something going, and they will be prepared for it, I'm sure. Notre Dame ran off eight first downs in that third quarter. The one for Georgia. The kick by Oliver is good. And so, with 54 seconds to play in the third quarter, it is now a seven-point lead for Georgia. To the final quarter of play in the 47th Sugar Bowl game. Georgia leading Notre Dame 17 to 10. The Irish dominating play in the second half. Mark Malkowitz has got the punt out of his end zone. Notre Dame, if they handle the ball properly, will have very good field position. Probably inside the 50. The kick is away. Not very long. Tail dragger, though, and it takes a Georgia bounce. Durison feels it just to preserve the yardage. And he's ruled down. And Notre Dame will have the ball first down at their own 45. Here are the stats, and look on the right side for Georgia. 79 yards, total offense. Give credit to the Notre Dame defense, which has carried this team all year long. 23 quarters in the middle of the season, they did not allow a touchdown. That's nearly six football games before Air Force scored in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame moving the ball effectively right now. Has the momentum. They sent Holohan and Hunter double wide to the open side of the field. First down from their own 46. They're a touchdown away from the Bulldogs. And the conversion. And the ball goes to the tailback. And Phil Carter gets loose in the secondary. And he is caught and tripped up. Otherwise, he would have picked up another 10 or 12 yards. It was Dale Carver, a sophomore from Melbourne, Florida, that grabbed his shoes up. Deep, he might have gone all the way. He had two blockers, Carter did, out in front of him when Carver came and tripped him up from behind. Carter was on his way. He picked up nine yards to total 93 yards of the ball game on 23 carries. He, too, is a very fine tailback runner. Very durable, very tough inside with his shoulder pads right over his toes, giving the defense very little room to make the tackle. Second down and one. Carter again. Carter goes slipping through the middle, gets it down to the 40, and it's a first down for Notre Dame at the Georgia 40. Lost his shoe. Gonna have to leave. Stone will come in at tailback. Nate Taylor made the tackle on the last play. Georgia very desperately needs for their defense to give Notre Dame a bad play. Georgia Somehow. defense has got to be getting tired. They were out there virtually the whole quarter. Notre Dame is getting the offensive line are getting a good, good movement. Stone. He splits it over the left side, and he's got big yardage. Six of them down to the 34. That time he went behind Shiner and Ellis. And Georgia is now substituting. They're putting some second linemen in the game, Keith. What you mentioned, uh, they were getting tired. They've got some fresh people in the ball game. Second down four from the Georgia 34. Blair Keel. Got to keep it. Whoa, that's a dandy little move by the Notre Dame quarterback as he juked the Georgia man. And he goes down the field for a first down for the Irish at the Georgia 28. Tony Hunter, the wide receiver, number 85, came back and made a beautiful block, which helped Keel pick up the needed yardage for the first down. Now the Georgia first string linemen are coming back in the ball game. Jeff Falk, number 15, warming up there for Georgia. He's a little bigger than Buck. Jim Stone has it. He's got two to the 26 in this second half of play. Notre Dame has run off 10 first downs. 
Georgia one in the ball game 17 first downs against six favor of the Irish. Frank Ross the senior linebacker and captain is the one who directs the team and he's also a very fine football player his job read the football plug the hole and make the tackle on stone number 42 wraps him up and pulls him to the ground second down eight Carter breaks a tackle gets close to the 20 it's going to be third down and more than two close to three Third and two has been a very critical down, Keith, in earlier goings for Notre Dame. In fact, they have failed on most of their third and two situations by running. They came out and threw in the third quarter on third and two and made the first down. This is almost three. Carter now, 103 yards of the ball game for the Irish. try by the Notre Dame tailback Carter has his legs taken from under him by Scott Warner and it is now fourth down one thing that Georgia anticipated was the sweep they had Warner coming from the corner Notre Dame is going for the field goal they're gonna go for the three in a 17 to 10 ball game this is the fourth possession of the quarter Notre Dame has of the half and Notre Dame has moved the ball on each occasion only getting three points so far. This is another three-point opportunity. Oliver today has kicked a 50-yarder, missed a 48-yarder, was blocked actually, and missed a 30-yarder. And here's the kick from 38 yards, and it is no good. It is no good. Oh my goodness. 10.56 to play in the game and the Bulldogs hold. From the 21, Georgia takes over. And the Georgia faithful, who were lucky enough to get inside the dome to watch the ball game today, standing and roaring for their team. Bulldogs lead 17 to 10. Their offense has been nil so far in the second half. Buck Ballou yet to complete a pass today. Having trouble getting loose. A penalty flag is down. Ballou is caught back in the line of scrimmage again and dropped at the 16. Now we get another penalty flag. And I think the second one is against a Notre Dame player. I don't know what the first one was, but looked to me like Scott Zedek came in there a little bit late. And uh, Fisher was standing there and uh, threw a flag right on his back. Notre Dame. Of course, I don't back. know what the fellow said to Scott, you know, to get him stirred up. It is against Georgia, the first call. Unsportsmanlike conduct call goes against Notre Dame and Zedek. And Keith, we're going to see a mark off five yards, I would think. Back, a penalized Georgia, and 10 yards. Isn't that one of those where they yeah, add, subtract? It should be a 10 yard penalty against Notre Dame. Well, you had a procedure call against Georgia, right? Yes. A dead ball now, foul. A dead ball is, foul against Notre Dame. And they don't offset. Uh, turn it on, Clint. Well, his mic's not working. Personal foul against Notre Dame. Now he's marked off the five against Georgia. Now he's going to mark it off against Notre Dame. It's going to be a net gain of 10 yards for Georgia. Penalties, penalties, penalties have really hurt Notre Dame along with their turnovers. That's a motion offense. It's a dead ball foul, unsportsmanlike there, and it's a first down. First down. All right, net 10 yards on the That's the first, first time down. we've seen that this year. Yes, it is. First time we've seen it in two years since they changed the rules. Yes. First time I've seen it. Georgia has not gained any yards in this whole half so far. You've got 10.39 to play in the ball game. The ball is sitting up near the 32. Dan Devine is over trying to get the official's attention to come talk to him. He refuses to do so. I don't know if that's a first down. They've got to bring the chain out, I guess, to uh, place it down. Uh, well, you'd think it would necessarily uh, be an automatic. Yep. If his feet, if he stepped off the yards perfectly, it would be because yep. he would step off five in so. one direction and, five, and 10, 15 in the other would be a first down. Maybe Clint doesn't walk even. <laughs> Most of us don't. <laughs> yeah, right. That is the second first down registered for Georgia in this half. Well, that was a 
damaging penalty to Notre Dame's chances of pulling this game out. From the 32 now, first down. They get it right. Give it to Walker. Up the middle goes Herschel. He gets it up to the 35 before he is thrown back. He's got about three and a half. The ball is in between the 31 32 as they start play. That'll give Walker 128 yards in a ball game on 26 carries. I'm not so sure if I were sitting on a, a seven point lead here, I wouldn't let Herschel see a whole lot of the ball right at this point, Frank. And particularly since he's only fumbled one time in 300 carries, and that in the ninth game of the season. Second down to about six. Walker's got it again. Oh, did he take a wallet? Bob yeah. Crable hit him right on the helmet. Just helmet the helmet, and he rolled him back. Watch this hit. Crable, as soon as he reads the play, he doesn't wait, knowing that he must plug the hole to stop Walker before he gets started. Walker is cutting back over the middle when they collision, and look at the leg drive of Bob Crable. Just a perfect tackle for the All-American middle line. He linebacker. still didn't put him down, though. He did not put him down. He had to get help to get the big horse on the ground. Third down and six. Again, play action pass. Blues passes away. This one is caught by Lynn. No, he didn't hold it. Lindsey Scott finally got a chance to make a catch. And the ball was thrown low, and Blue still hasn't completed a pass. He's 0 for 9. We have a Notre Dame player that's injured on the field as we watch it again. Blue is throwing the ball to Lindsey Scott, outstanding wide receiver. He has Short it. Hopper. But then I guess it falls out when he hits the ground. Yeah, or did he short hop it? Okay. Short yeah, that's the combination Scott and Ballou that hooked up for the miracle in the Florida game. Timeout for Notre Dame's Mark Zavagnan, the left linebacker, a sophomore out of Evergreen Park, Illinois, with nine minutes and 12 seconds to play in what has been a crazy football game. Georgia leading 17 to 10. Zavagnan runs off the field. He's all right. Ballou beleaguered on the sidelines. Fourth down for Georgia. Malkowitz is in the punt. Notre Dame should get good field position. They've got 10 up on the line. They're sending them. Heats on Malkowitz. Heats on the offensive line for Georgia. On the snap. The snap is good. Pressure is on. Kick is away. Pretty good kick. Forces Krim into a fair catch. Back at his 26. So Malkowitz and the offensive line for Georgia delivered. There's Mark Savakman. He's all right. And his bell rung a little. A 39-yard punt. And now Notre Dame, they're going to mark it at the 27. There they'll go to work, trailing by seven points with nine minutes and five seconds to play in the ball game. Georgia trying to hang on and win its first national championship ever. The great team of Sinkwich, Trippy et al., Poshner, Davis, and that bunch, they finished second to Ohio State the year they defeated UCLA in the Rose Bowl, nine to nothing. Finished third another time, but have never finished number one. They're trying to do it this year. Blair Keel on a roll. Puts his pass in the air to the sideline, and the penalty flag is thrown. And they have some interference here. Let's see. Warner was defending against Hunter. It's been a pretty decent matchup all day. One time Hunter is beaten. I believe it's offensive interference. It is. Also an ineligible man downfield to take the choice. Both of them lose. One lose 15 yards and down. The other doesn't. So I'm sure they'll take the offensive interference. Hunter tried to push off on Warner. Colohan might have been the man that yes, did the done the pushing. It's against Notre Dame. Offensive interference, and it backs the football up to the 13-yard line. Notre Dame seven, seven, seven flags and 64 yards. Georgia five flags and 27 yards, and it's second down. They've got to go to the 38, 37 to get the first down. Keel with a strong arm goes deep for Hunter. It is intercepted. Picked off by Mike Fisher, who read the play well, came around Hunter to make the interception. And it's turnovers that are killing the Irish. Keith 
only a football coach can fully appreciate this play because the timing was perfect, meaning that Fisher stayed deep until the ball was thrown up. Watch 31 break in front of him. He kept protection deep, but when the ball was thrown front, he came in throw short. He came in front and made the interception of very outstanding play. He made two against Florida to save the game there. So the man of the moment is Mike Fisher. But let's see what Ballou can do. Can he finally get the Georgia offense going? He's going deep for the corner, throwing for half final, and it's almost picked off by Tom Gibbons. But Tom can't hang on to it. And it's second down. And once again, Ballou pays for having the privilege of throwing the pass. You're going to see Arnold. He's just trying to run it out and up on Gibbons, number 27, the captain of the team. It's very hard to get deep on a safety man that's playing deep. Gibbon has it momentarily, but it falls out. But Ballou paid for it, as Keith said. Tim Marshall, number 77, the freshman, really decked him while he was throwing the ball. Jim Evans, a back judge, was flat of his back, having fallen down, but he had his eyes on the play. Second down and 10. It's Herschel Walker. Notre Dame looking for him. They get him at the 34. Marshall and Crable. There's the man that made that big interception. Mike Fisher was a walk-on, transferred to Georgia as a freshman, earned the scholarship, made the team, and made one of the most critical interceptions of anybody's lifetime, possibly saving Georgia's national championship hopes. Third down and eight. Up the middle goes Walker. Short of the first down. Brings up fourth down. Remember a fellow named Rex Robinson. Number five. He's coming out. He hit a 57-yarder against South Carolina to win the game. He hit a 57-yarder against Georgia Tech that figured in it. Well, he's 17 for 23 for the season. Today he made today. one from 46, and he missed one. This is a 48-yard field goal attempt, and it is huge. The importance of this kick is enormous. It is up high. It is long enough. It is no good. It is no good wide, apparently, to the right. Did not hook enough for it. Notre Dame takes over, trailing by seven. Rex Robinson had only missed three times from the distance, kicking from 48 yards after having made a 46-yarder in the game. He hit it plenty long, but from that right hash mark, he didn't get any hook on it, and it stayed wide to the right. And Notre Dame stops Georgia. And we've got 7.29 to play in the football game, with Georgia leading 17 to 10, and the football is sitting on the 31-yard line of Notre Dame. And the Georgia defense has just swelled up and played their hearts out. They truly have. They've been out there the whole half. The Georgia offense has just been nothing in the second half. The Irish have shut them down, down the sidelines. Hunter can't get to the ball. He's hollering about it. No interference. Southwest Conference official. Done a pretty good job, too, and it's been a temper-laden, tough football game. You're going to see Hunter. He's trying. That little delay fake was to make Werner uh, slow up and Werner did slow up and actually Hip came over to prevent the touchdown number 49 and Hunter of course is complaining that Werner interfered with it it was close but it wasn't uh, intentional second down and 10 for the Irish from their own 31 shotgun here over the middle complete out to the 38 to Nick Veer, big tight end. Veer is a 246 pounder. Let's look at the last play on Hunter with Werner, the All American halfback, number 19. The rule says that there's no intent to impede. It looks to me like that Werner knew he was beaten on the play and tried to block him from going deep momentarily, but he got away with it. Ball is up near the 39, third down and two. Keel keeps it, throws it to the sidelines. Incomplete. Oh, that was close. 
Werner covering Hunter. That's been a terrific duel out here today between those two. I don't think I've seen as many one-on-one -on -one situations. And, of course, on that particular play, Keel changed at the line of scrimmage. He had a running play call. Hunter was covered one-on-one. -on -one. He changed to the rollout pass, but Werner just got all over it. And it is fourth down, and the Irish will have to give it up. Time now, the definite ally of Georgia. They lead by seven. Blair Keel to kick. Werner is deep. Snap is good. Kick is away. Werner circles. Falls fair catch and fields it at the 22 of Georgia. So the Bulldogs now will try to rest their defense a little bit, try to get some kind of offense going. Buck Ballou gives the ball to Herschel Walker, and Walker is caught behind the line of scrimmage and ridden down by Bob Crable. What I, we're, we're noticing Crable, and I think the reason is that he's not waiting. Uh, you watch him on the replay, he's plugging the hole. He's finding that seam. That, that's what he's so good at. He sees an opening seam, he takes it, and goes in and makes the tackle on Walker for a two-yard loss. Second down. Georgia's offense. Inept in the second half. Walker again trying to get to the sidelines. Pinned in over there and caught at the 20. Notre Dame defense swarming. And it's a big, powerful defense. And Georgia is in a tough situation. Do they rely on their defense as we look at the passing? Notre Dame 132 and Georgia 0, leading 17 to 10. But do we look and judge what will Georgia do on third down and 12 yards to go, leading for the national championship by seven points? Will they throw or will they be conservative? On the throw. Ballou puts it up deep. Pass is incomplete. Morris Brown, the tight end, going downfield. He didn't get close to that one. The other time he saw the ball, it went through his hand. Now Georgia will have to kick it. And once again, Notre Dame is going to get the football in good field position. Ballou now is 0 for 11. And we must say once again, the Georgia defense is going to be tested with very good field position, possibly at midfield. 5-16 to play. Two men back, nine-man front. Now the Irish peel back, no pressure, and the kick is out. And a fair catch by Krim, and Notre Dame owns the football. First down at their own 42. Now the question is, can the Georgia defense continue to hang on? Here we go. Who knows what's going through the mind of Mr. Ballou at the moment. And Mr. Vince Dooley, the coach, with so much at stake in this ball game. All right, Georgia defense lines up six-man front against Notre Dame. First down, Irish, they're 42. Keel turns and hands the ball off to Carter. And Carter gets around the corner, butts head, and gets it up to nearly midfield. Tommy Thurston made the tackle. Tony Hunter was lined up at tight end on that particular play. We remember early in the season, Hunter lined up at tight end, and the opposing team didn't catch it. He got in behind uh, the defense for a touchdown. Carter now with 109 yards in the ball game on 27 carries. Second down, three for Notre Dame at midfield. Keel keeping. Looks downfield. Caught. Drop. Back at the 45. Eddie Weaver. Eddie Weaver, look at him make a tremendous play. The one thing that he's got to do is get away from the blocker, and that's hard to do when he grabs a little bit of your arm. But he has the quickness, and he just keeps coming, and finally slows Keel down enough to make the play. Now, inexperience cost Notre Dame on that play. Mastek was wide open on the bootleg pass, but Creel didn't have the patience to find him and hit him. Loss is back near the 45. And it's third down and eight. Out of the shotgun. Georgia coming. Pass thrown short over the middle. Pass is caught by Nick Veer. Brought down by Chris Welton. But it is short of the first down. It's going to be fourth down and short. You've got to figure they go for it at three and a half minutes to play in a ball game. Very definitely. And that was excellent execution on Keel's part. Georgia had the blitz. 
He was lined up in the shotgun, shotgun deep where he could see the blitz. He just dropped it over the line and tied in Nick Beer. That's the kind of pass play that we thought Georgia might bring to the ballpark against Notre Dame. They could have used it earlier. Fourth and one for the Irish. Heel still got it on fourth and one. He gets his pass off and he's intercepted. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That young man is a real winner. Scott Warner. and one Field takes a deep drop under pressure throws it up a grab and Warner intercepts it with 256 to play in the game from the 34 Georgia's ball Ballou on a run one all the way out of bounds stop at the clock goes out at about the 40 let's go back to that fourth down play you're going to see a bootleg of fake He's going to fake to, to uh, punt, uh, Stone 42. Yeah, but Frank, what about the logic of the point? The logic is unbelievably unusual. The alternative is to run harder right over the middle on fourth and one. But Werner should not have intercepted it because it was fourth down. He forgot the down and distance because of the unusual call. That of thing was as big one. as the moon up there for old Scott. That three, he had to catch it. He's a human being. He just had to come down with it. On second down, they give it inside to Herschel, and the Irish stop him short of the first down as he loops it out to about the 41. He's going to bring up third down and about two and a half or three as Kramer made the stop. Someone took time. I guess it was Notre Dame. That you only have 242 to play in the ball game. Georgia leading 17 to 10. Keith, I've never seen so many third down in two situations. You see that Notre Dame just shut Herschel down yeah. in the second half. Give credit to both defenses. It's been a tremendous defensive struggle by both teams. Notre Dame has forced Georgia to kick after one, two, three. Georgia has hung on, given up some yardage, but not any touchdown. But Georgia's in a good one defense uh, on that fourth and one play. Coming. Coming. That's right. And what? lo and behold, they throw try to loop a pass downfield. Mm -hmm. The most unusual call because the bootleg, I must say this, the bootleg pass does not give you good pass protection on the weak side. The defensive end, on most occasions, if he's coming, is untouched. And that's exactly what happened in that game. Off guard could not pull in time to make the block. Georgia holding on to the ball. Right here is an awful big play for them. They need three, about three yards, a little less than three. Yards. Third down. They can get a first down here. It'll be an upset in the second half, for one thing. But secondly, it'll give them a chance to run off time. They've had two so far. Here's Ballou on a keep. He gets away. He's got the first down. Well, he can't throw the ball today, but suddenly Buck's trying to run it, and he does with success, and that is a big first down for Georgia. Just a determined run by Ballou. Good blocking in the line. He wasn't going to throw the ball unless the receiver was wide open. Look at him. He's watching downfield, but he cuts back inside of the Bogdan and keeps the ball for the first down. At the 46. Now you have 225 to play in the game. Walker is caught by Hankard. And they'll give his progress just about the line of scrimmage. The muscle of Notre Dame showed up as Jimmy Womack, the fullback, tried to block Hankard out, and he couldn't move him. Hankard just came inside and made the play. We've got a timeout on the field. Charge to Notre Dame with 2.16 to play in the game, and the Irish have one timeout remaining. Well, it's got to be quiet on the streets of New Orleans. It's got to be quiet in a lot of places. South Bend, Athens. It's just been... <laughs> Some kind of a football game. Georgia's two minutes and 16 seconds away from their first national championship. Two minutes and 16 seconds as Georgia now on second down and 10 gives the ball to that great freshman running back, Herschel Walker, and he runs out of bounds in the hands of Scott Zedek. Scott trying to stand up and hold on and keep from tumbling into the crowd. He did not, in a sense, make contact. All he did was grab Herschel trying to get some support. 
and you can watch for Notre Dame trying to tackle high, hoping that they can knock the ball loose and get good field position with chance to score and win, possibly win the game. Ballou puts it in the air, throws to Arnold. Arnold comes down with it, and it's a pass completion. His first pass of the ball game is completed, and it gets him a first down. Amp Arnold is going to push deep, and the Notre Dame back, Prim backs up, and he comes back to the ball. The big key, otherwise it could have been intercepted. He has to have one foot down after the completion. A very fine throw, an excellent catch at a very critical time in the ball game. Critical. It's like the very life's breath here for both teams, for that matter. 17 to 10. We've got a Notre Dame man down on the field and have not been able to pick up the number as yet. The clock is stopped at 2.05 to play. Let's talk about the numbers. Notre Dame, four turnovers. Big story, big part of the game. 191 yards rushing for the Irish, 138 passing for 329 total. Georgia, 96 yards rushing. Now the losses, uh, the team losses, including the, the sacks of uh, Buck Blue, take away the total on Herschel Walker as uh, John Hankard is being helped off the field. Gosh, I hope that's not an easy John. My goodness, what a nice young man he is, and he's played a terrific football game today. Played his heart out on you know, every down. Just a high level of performance for this young man. For three years, he started at that left end position. But the uh, losses by Ballou of 49 reduced the total net yardage on the ground for Georgia to 96. They've only gained seven yards in passing, and it was on that last pass completion and how big it was. It got him a first down. Four more snaps to the ball. The clock running now at 1.55 to play in the game, and a penalty flag flutters into the air as the play goes inside the Walker. Let's see about the penalty. While they're deciding, I should mention that under the rules in college football, the clock continues to run after the official steps off the penalty. Here it is. Here it is. Offside. Defense. Another mistake for the Irish. It'll cost them five. The clock right now is stationary at 1.49 to play in the game. That's eight flags and 69 yards against Notre Dame. The football is sitting at the Notre Dame 38. Georgia just may be able to sit on it, Frank. You, with uh, Keith, it takes a, you can use four downs and it takes about two minutes. Well, Notre Dame only has one time, no, one time out remaining. Here's Herschel Walker running all over the field. He just sticks his head down and burrows right into the three Notre Damers, but they tumble him out of bounds inside the 30. And that's going to be another first down as Rick Naylor and Dave Durson came across to get him. Walker now with 145 yards on 35 carries, and Georgia has four more snaps of the ball as Herschel Walker turned it upfield. 128 to play in the game. Keith, have you ever seen a freshman have such good poise to know that he had nothing, apparently nothing, on the side of the block? Turn back and make the first down. Never. Well, I say never. Well, we haven't seen one this fast and big before, I promise <laughs> no. you. I never have. No, nor have I. First down. Just inside the 30, and it's Walker again. Getting some blocking in front. Gets to the outside. Goes down at the 25. Got the better part of five yards on that carry, and he stays inbound. Then you've got a minute 15 to play in the ball game. Ronnie Stewart going out onto the field. Jimmy Womack does not want to come out. <laughs> Jimmy's coming. It's his birthday. And he's played a terrific game. And the fullbacks, as we've said many, many times, have to take great pride to be the blocker in the high formation. Walker is coming out, and Carney Norris goes in at tailback. Walker comes out. 36 carries, 150 yards, 50 seconds to play in the game. Georgia students and Georgia partisans moving down to the sideline. 40 seconds to play in the ball game. Georgia has never finished a season. Ranked number one. And now time is called. Keith, I want to just congratulate, hoping that it turns out as it looks like it is, Vince Dooley, who's a credit to the coaching profession. Highly respected and admired by everybody in the game. 
They mark off the five-yard delay of game penalty against Georgia. Crowd is swarming down onto the edge of the field. Realize Georgia has been playing football since before the start of the century. Been a lot of Notre Dameers figure in their football history. Guys like Mayer and late Jim Crowley. Crowley. All coached at Georgia. All coached there. Pop Warner coached there. Produced Georgia's first undefeated team. Over the years, Wally Butts and the great seasons that he had. Georgia running out the clock, 35 seconds, just 35 ticks away. And the Georgia Bulldogs figure to finish number one in the polls because they'll be the only team in the country that won all 12 of their games. I'm sure that Jackie Sherrill and his Pitt Panthers, Notre Dame spends its last time out with 33 seconds to play. I'm sure Jackie Sherrill and his Pitt Panthers feel they are as good as anybody in the country. But they lost a football game at Florida State, 36 to 22. Florida State, I'm sure, feels they are as good as anybody in the country. But they lost a football game to Miami by a single point. And they must play Oklahoma tonight in the Orange Bowl. Michigan with a tremendous finish toward the end of the season. But they lost two football games. Keith, I think what you're saying is that there are a lot of fine, fine football teams in this country, and many of them are practically equal and in any occasion could win the national championship. Herschel Walker has been named the MVP of the Sugar Bowl. 150 yards on 36 carries and two touchdowns. There was a picture of Dan Devine, and I want to say, and I've said it before, Dan Devine is a great football coach. He has always handled himself and his team with dignity, with grace, and with style. We'll miss him in the coaching profession, and I hope that he comes back after a year. It is third down and about 11 for Georgia after the penalty. Ballou rolls it out. He just wants to run around and kill the clock. He's going to run as long as he can, keeping in the field of play. Notre Dame with no more timeouts remaining. We're now inside 25 seconds, and Georgia can stand there and exult as the time ticks away. And a team won the national championship without making mistakes, Keith. That's what you talked about. They didn't make mistakes, and Notre Dame did. The crowd, almost uncontrollable, comes storming onto the field to surround both teams. The game is over. Georgia has won 17 to 10. Riding on the shoulders of his Georgia football player. Considering all the factors involved, all the people involved in the game, the elements of the game, size, history, all of those things, you'd have to say this is something of an upset. But it happened in the first half as Georgia cashed in on two Notre Dame mistakes, one on the kickoff, one on the fumble to get the two touchdowns, the 46-yard field goal by Rex Robinson. In the second half, Notre Dame totally dominated the football game. But the Georgia defense, a bunch of kids with as much gizzard as I have ever seen, just hung on to the last fingernail and finally won it 17 to 10. Keith, you expressed it quite beautifully. The Georgia defense, they live with that yardage inside, but they somehow come up with a big play. Enough to stop the opponents before they get to that goal line. What a thrill it is for these people from Georgia. Look at them out on the field. Celebrating something that every person that coaches football, or plays football, or follows college football, wants a national championship. Keep our thrill for them. But I will say this, too. How many times that school right there at the top of that picture, Notre Dame, has figured in championship games. They came here first to the Sugar Bowl. They beat Alabama. It's Aaron Parsik and Gamble. The Clements throwing out of the end zone and won 24-23. Today, a lot of people thought they would win here. They had really no chance at a national championship. But the thing I am sure that makes this a bigger thing for the folks who support the Georgia Bulldogs is the fact that they beat Notre Dame. I, I mean, that's a mark Good. of pride right there. Yes, sir. with Notre Dame four times in the 70s, won in the game that met the national championship or took the game on the national championship away from the opponents. To beat Notre Dame for the national championship will always be remembered by every Georgia fan. 